to the bottom of this one. Unspoken truths that I miss one. Tap into the minds of the people. Rather acknowledge before I dismiss one. Atheists, Muslim, Christians, Buddhists, they all got usage. All got perspective. It's a collective. Get to the bottom of the truth is. What a heart's uncovered. What you detox from all of the lies you smother. What I'm trying to the kill you. Or fake you recover. Yeah. Peel off the makeup. We finna take off. Never said it'd be a cakewalk. Meditate till we charged up. As cute goes regardless. Decalcify my pineal. Breaking language barriers. We saw millennials. Planets passing age rotations. Down me, we owe. So down me, we know. Sometimes we can't be slow. That's why my ears open. Every drop you add could complete the ocean. Speak up, play your part too. Been vulnerable, it's so hard to reflect on all the truth like torture. It's on you, tell the truth. Hi, everybody. I'm Kimberly with Unseen Twisted Truth. We are the People's Podcast. If you support you, we will support you. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored. I am so honored to have you on. Um, I'm going to tell the world that you are Tommy Arigato. Yes. That is the most amazing thing ever. Like, I have nothing but love and respect for you, and I appreciate you coming on my platform. I appreciate it. I remember love you, too. Yeah. You're a dope soul, for real, for real. So, uh, we're going to talk about how health is wealth. Um, there might be some more people um, come in a little bit at a time. I cannot figure out how to stream this to Instagram because my on my on the laptop it doesn't show me where I can go in you know, live, and I need a stream key, and it does not show me where I can go to Instagram live. Hmm. I, I just I don't see where I can go to Instagram live, and if I do it from my phone, it doesn't give me a stream key. So. But nonetheless, that's something I need to figure out. Yeah, I wouldn't know. I know. <laughs> and I can't figure it out neither. So, I want to bless this show real quick. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. When you hear the word, health is wealth... What do you think of that? Uh, shoot, I think it's like a, I think of a healthy food <laughs> that costs that costs a lot of money. Healthy food? That's what you think of when you, health is well. Hold on, I, I think I'm going to have somebody else join me. Um, no, health is wealth is more than healthy food. I, I know, what, that's just what it makes me think of. Hmm. That, fancy, the, that fancy grocery store? Yeah. <laughs> so listen, when I hear health is wealth, I'm not thinking of food. I'm thinking of mental what you put in is what you get in return from mentally. It's everything in life from um, the food you eat to um, to uh, the music you listen to. I'm trying to get this person to come on. Right to the music you listen to. Um, to the food you put in your mouth. To... To everything, health as wealth is 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 you have to care about yourself and how you um partake things and how you see things. I agree. So we've all been through dark places. We've all been through dark times. We've all experienced some things that have been very dark for us and heavy for us that wanted to, to make us want to quit in life. And the only reason why we kept going is because of ourselves. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got ourselves out of that stump. 
we allowed ourselves to continue growing. So when I hear health as well, it's not really just food. It's not really just the music you listen to. It's the minds that you have. It's about what you allow yourself to um, feel. When you think of riches, do you think of riches as in your pockets? Or do you think of riches for your soul and your heart? Uh, I've always thought of... Uh, I've always thought of spirit, being riches in spirit. Okay. Is always what was most important. And that's exactly how it is about... Um, oops, I spelled that wrong. And that's exactly how it is about um, your health. It's not just... It's not just, damn, my eyesight's so bad. Um, I think I spelled your last name right. Oh, platforms. So it's not, same thing about your health. It's not about just being so dry with the word health as well. It's, it's the fact of that it's beyond imagined. It's beyond just what you could grasp. It's at nighttime when you get ready to rest in the evening, what's the last thought you have? When you wake up in the first thing in the rising, what's the first thought you have? Are you are you feeding yourself positively or are you feeding yourself negatively? Are you are you treating yourself poorly? Or are you treating yourself wealthy? And that's what it's about. And when I when I hear health as well, it's beyond it's beyond what I'm putting just in my mouth. It's about what I'm putting in my whole body, from my thoughts to what I say to what I see to how I feel to what I eat. Yeah. We have to water ourselves constantly, and we constantly have to be mindful of our actions. And realize our words matter. They're powerful. They're spells. So tell the world about you a little bit. Um, Like, where are you from? I'm from Arkansas. Me playing Arkansas. Okay. And what got you into liking music? What's what? Got you into liking music when you were younger. (laughs) What got you into that? Uh... Shoot, when I when I was like eight, I started beatboxing, but I didn't even know until I moved away. When I was twelve, I moved to Texas. And I didn't even know music was such a big deal until I did that. And uh, so, what really got me into it was uh, I met this guy that I became good friends with. His brother made music, and he like he say real provocative stuff that you know I knew my grandma would she she give me a whooping and she heard me talking like that <laughs> and uh so that's that's pretty much what inspired me to start. Okay. So what did you feel after you after you did music? How did you feel afterwards? After uh, after I what? After you started doing your music, after you um, made your first lyrics, after you wrote your first song, how'd you feel? Shoot. I don't know. That was a long time ago. You don't remember the first feeling that you had? No. No? You ever been through a situation where it was tough and like, um... You felt your back against the wall, and nobody listened to you. Oh, I'll give them. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's always like that. So, what helped you, though? What helped you remove your back from the wall? What may gave you a voice? Uh, that's a good question. What helped me was just knowing that, uh, knowing that, uh, it's always going to get better. We can't do nothing but get better. Yeah. It's only dark because you're in the middle of the storm right now. That's the heaviest. Uh, 
you know, it's a beautiful thing, though. I love it when it rains for many reasons. I love the newness from it. I love the clean, the cleans, cleansing from it, the washing away of old. I love the fact that it, how it smells and how it sounds and how it looks. I love how connected I am to the water, the feeling. And I love the release. I love the release in when it rains. I love the release. I love how I feel afterwards. Like I have removed so much of me that I now feel better. Like a good cry. And that's how I, that's how I feel about certain music I listen to. There's only a, a select few that I will sit and listen to a bunch of their stuff and that I can resonate with their sound. You are one of them. And I told you when I first come across you that you had a message and you were powerful and that you had a purpose and that it was only dark right now because you were in the middle of it. I didn't know what you were growing through. I just knew that you needed a hug. So I gave you a, a verbal hug. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen you blossom and smile and shine so bright since I've met you. Um, I just love how you are feeding into yourself and your, your boys and that they see this I'm not going to stop kind of attitude. I, I appreciate that with you. Uh, and um, I, I have nothing but respect of that of you. I, I appreciate that. You see every situation as positive, even when it's dark. What makes you want to do that? Well, because it being negative ain't, ain't going to help me. It's not, is it? No. And that's where health it's is. Easy. That's where health is wealth is. Yeah. It's easy to find bad stuff to say. It is. It is. It's heavy, though, isn't it? Yeah. Sure yeah. So, did you ever have an experience where you were just like, um, I can't believe that just happened? Like a, a, a spiritual experience that you cannot control that was amazing, that just brought so much joy, besides your boys, that brought so much joy to your life? Yeah. I. What was it? He ain't gonna believe you. I will believe you. I talked to the universe. Nah, nobody, nobody believe me. Just say I it. Swear, I seen an, I seen an angel one time. Okay. I think, I think. <laughs> it might not have been an angel. It might have just been. I don't know. I might have just been high or something. I don't know. But uh. Shoot, I was riding in the back of the car with, 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 with uh with these these two chicks from school, and uh, I don't I don't remember if we had smoked some butter or what, but uh like I seen this angel in the sky like coming down the like a sunbeam through the clouds, you know, uh -huh. and, and it was just floating and his wings it was all pretty and stuff, and it had the it had this this its facial expression was uh just um, blank. Like it had no, it had no emotions on it at all. But uh, man, I see that shit, and I turned around like no way, I like no way. I, I couldn't believe I even seen it, uh -huh. you know. And I, I turned around and looked at it like two or three more times, and it was still there. No. And like all of a sudden, it, like I got hit in the head with a, with a beam, like just a beam of. I felt like uh, I felt like I was thinking about everything. In the whole world, I was. Th I felt like I was thinking like every thought a human could possibly think ever, their whole life, like that, like, like I got downloaded or something like super quick, a whole big old download, or something like. I don't know. It just it really scared me because it like it zapped me or something, and uh, I thought that shit was real spiritual. So. 
that's a good thing though that's that's when you know that you are in your divine purpose you're living within your divine purpose when you're able to see that a lot of people are um so clouded by that that they would dismay that right away they'd be like nah 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 and try to pass it off onto so many things but you were able to witness that um don't try to belittle that. Don't try to downplay that as if that wasn't what it was. That's what you saw, and that's okay. There ain't nothing wrong with that. And those that don't believe it wasn't meant for them in the first place because they didn't see it. Right. So, right. yeah, no, that's all right. I ain't mad at you. Um, This is my beautiful uh, uh co-host. Would you like to introduce hey. yourself? What's up? Tell, What's up, everybody? Tell everybody who you are that don't know. I'm Big So, Sophia, but, you know, I like to call myself Big So, because I'm bigger than life. Um, <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, ooh, I mean, what do you want to know? <laughs> Just let people know a little bit about you, because they're going to see your face now. <laughs> She's on the spot now. <laughs> you did. You put me on the spot. Um, I mean, I have stories for days. He was talking about angels. I could tell you about aliens. Um, I really can. Um, <laughs> I'm a mom. I'm two kids. They just not, uh, but I'm a believer in everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. So I'm really going to believe in anything because how can you tell somebody that what they saw or experienced was real? Right. So, yeah, I'm just so I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate you coming on. Um being a part of the family um we need more we need more um energies that's vibrant and that will speak the truth regardless and i need that so i appreciate you being a part of it uh thank you so when you hear the word um health is wealth what do you think health is wealth yeah you know what a lot of people don't believe me but um Health is more important than anything. Um, just like I always say this, if I have an issue in my relationship, he's saying this thing like money does not mean everything. What do you mean? Because you can't take it with you when you die. So, in order to survive, you still have to be able to take care of yourself and make sure you're good first. You matter first, way above anything else. Anything else. Yeah. So I, I was saying that when I heard the word health is wealth, is it's about what you put inside you, what you allow yourself to um, partake in from the people that you surround yourself around to what you allow yourself to hear to what you allow yourself to intake in the food. That um, there's a lot of times that people um, don't love themselves correctly, that they will put up with anything and everything just because to them that was the only time they felt some kind of love. And once you. I like that. I it, actually like that because I find myself being around people who have the worst energy. I'm the type of person who can walk into a room and I can feel the energy in the room. Yeah. And I would not want to be there because of the type of energy. And people would look at me like, what's wrong? I'm like, something not right in here. I have to go. But if the vibes are good and I'm comfortable in this place, and I can be there. I can keep somebody's energy if we're one on one. You know what I mean? Yeah. As long as I'm around you, I can feel that's very real. Yeah, no, for real. People don't realize, um, see, I eliminated a lot of things that weren't of me. And ever since then, I became in my divine, my divine inner self, living within my divine purpose. And now I'm able to receive so much. You have to, you have to, piece of you has to die. You have to remove in order to intake. Yes. So when you get rid of those things that are not of you, 
you have more room for things that are for you. And um, it was the hardest thing ever in this world was to learn to correctly love myself. Because I held myself from agreements of others. I held myself with these binds and chains that other people put upon me that were not of me just because I, I, I knew no better. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know that, you know, that I was supposed to love myself like that. I always thought I was just supposed to love someone else. That's my biggest issue. You have to learn to love yourself before you love anybody else because you'll find yourself in situations that I myself fit in where I love the person way more than myself and I sacrifice my sanity. Just me and the, as a person, just because I love somebody else more than I love me. I have to learn how to love me first. Yeah. That way you can love somebody else properly. You know what I don't really care for much in society this day and age, honestly? I don't really care for the fact that that, that uh, people look down on men when they have feelings. Like they are not allowed to feel anything. They are not allowed to go through anything. It makes no sense to me because when did they become any different than us as women? Okay, when it comes to men and their feelings, you have men out here who try to hide their feelings because most men, are, we live in a society where um, I really honestly think it's sad when people tell you, you know, um, you can't feel or you're too soft or whatever. Like, we're, at the end of the day, we are people. Yeah. If you feel like crying or you feel like crying. Why? Let it out. Yeah. I can't wrap my head around that. I can't make no sense of that whatsoever. Because to me, that is the 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 dumbest thing I ever heard. Like, <laughs> just because they have balls doesn't mean they don't have a heart. Exactly. But then they take on that role, though. When you think about it, they take on that because that's probably how they were raised. Or just the men that they be alive, their friends, or whatever. Tommy. There's no choice. What's your intake on that one, Tommy? Do you feel that um, it's, it's different for men to have feelings? Uh, I think a lot of dudes are just afraid of their own feelings. Yes. So, and they're afraid of their, they're afraid of other people judging them because of what society thinks about men having feelings. So they end up, they end yeah. And that's really all it is to it, because the fact that men have feelings has always been a, they're just afraid of being judged. So, I just, yeah, but as a woman, you have to give a man that safe space to be able to let himself go with you. Yeah, but as, as a man, you can't wait for a safe space. You be your own safe space. That's true. Yeah, you can be your own that's true. Space, and that makes it like, okay, I'm gonna do in private, but I'm going to be hard and public. I'm going to be this tough man in public. I don't got feelings. Well, it's like that. Yeah. Thanks. Don't live like that. You, you can't live like that. You got to be able to cry too. Exactly. I think that's what makes you a man. Being able to let your feelings go without feeling like you're being judged. You, men need a safe space for that. Honestly. They do. they do and the thing is they don't have one they don't mm -hmm. and so that's when they have to become their own and they only can do it in the privacy of their own which is not fair no not at all because I promise you if I feel like it I will cry right now right and nobody would judge you I have no fucks to give if they did because at exactly. the end of the day I have to release and that's how right. I think everybody should feel you're only human. Uh-uh. I don't but, use that. I don't use that. I don't like that at all. I don't use that. I, I don't. I, I apologize. I cannot relate to that at all or receive that. Um, People use that as an excuse to be less than. It, no, I'm using it as, you know, like, like they say, us women, we can sit here and cry, but we can ugly cry, whatever. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to have sympathy for us. 
I'm just gonna. So as Tommy said once here, oh, you're a fun. Yeah, you're weak. Da, 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 da. Like, come on. Be a person just like us. Let him, let him go. And I, and I will give you that. I can receive that. I will say you have um, emotionals, human emotions. I will say that you have, um, you're having a human experience with human emotions. Not only just that, though, you have a heart and you care. You have feelings. It has nothing to do with being human. It's the fact that you have compassion and empathy. And that's what I think it is. I think that the, it, that they think just because it's uh, they're supposed to be these leaders and these hard people that they can't have empathy or compassion. I don't. It doesn't. I can't wrap my head around a lot of things in this world, in this realm. I really, honestly, can't. And that's one thing. I just I can't. So I'm not gonna go around saying I'm a human, let alone I'm a woman or anything to be proud of. Because these people make it all disgraceful. Yeah, there's zero empathy, especially nowadays. None. We we um them normalize just hurting people's feelings and you know, when you hurt somebody's feelings, you would people nowadays they say swallow it, like this is life, this is this how it is. Control your emotions. Don't be hurt. I, and I don't think that's the way it should be because that's how people get bottled up and that's how people have to do some um, shadow work and some in healing inner child in. And then they have to go and unbury all that that they held for so long and they build this wall up and they don't allow people in. Exactly. And that's, that's how I feel about the term control your emotions. It's just a band-aid. It's like, okay, stop crying. Yeah. And let it be that. But at the end of the day, if I don't address the situation or whatever it is that's going on with me, I'm going to hold it in. And then I'm going to eventually blow up. Now I'm crazy or a psycho. Mm -hmm. So... Tommy is it a very, very amazing energy. Um, I haven't been blessed yet to physically meet him. The universe um, put me into his life, and I've been loving him since. He's just such a beautiful energy in his music and just how he comes across things. Like, he's so um, versatile. He'll do country all the way down to gangster rap. Like, he will do... He's so diverse, and, and it all sounds so wonderful. Like, he can do it all. And... And just and just the fact that he speaks life when he speaks too. So he'll tell about emotions. He'll feel emotions, and when he when his words come out, they're like daggers because he'll say something and it's gonna make you feel it, and you're gonna relate to it, even if it ain't about you. You're gonna relate to it. And um, there's a song that he did. I didn't get a chance to get it. He never gave it to me. But there's a song he did. I got pieces of it, but I don't think I have enough of it to play on here. I don't think I don't have it in the right format to be able to play on here. Um and it it might have been something about a relationship or something that he went through at one time. I'm not sure. I could be speculating, but at the end of the day it felt like something I went through. It it felt like something I grew through. It felt like something I was dealing with at one time and I was just like, man, that hit hard for me. So to have that kind of empathy to be able to put it in pen and to put it out there. Do you see at the bottom where it where shows the comments? Do you see this over here on the side of your uh -huh. screen? Can you read that from Born Rich? What do you say? Uh, the thing is, men have a role to play and so does women. It's okay for a man to cry, but it's not okay for a man to be emotional like a woman. Women are nurturing and men are protectors and providers. I think today they are pushing too much of this feminine energy on men. I agree too. Yep. Gotta, gotta be careful with that. I agree you too. Do. I agree too. Um, I I definitely definitely agree. And you know what else? Because they're pushing that um that feminine energy onto men that they're trying to push that masculine role onto women and it's giving them that um false sense of I don't need no man. I say this all the time. I don't care what nobody says. I need a man. Yeah. Ever. Today the men are women and the men are the the men are women and the women are men. Facts. I always say this. 
facts. And you know what? The one thing I know I do need, though, in this world, I can say I don't need a lot of things. One thing I know I do need is air. But I want I want a lot. And I definitely want a man. I don't want to do this shit alone. I definitely need a man. I don't want to do it alone. But <laughs> I don't either. Listen, it's not meant to be done alone. At all. Even in parenthood. Yeah. Men go around creating single mothers every single day. And women yeah. allow it because women do the same. Women allow it. And women, women and women create single mothers too because women push the men out for dumb reasons just because of their ego or problem with them. It goes yeah. both ways because the man don't want you no more doesn't mean he doesn't want to be in his child's life. But you you say because you don't want me then you don't get them. Uh-huh. It goes both ways. I'm not going to sit here and just bash and say that men do that shit because I've seen some trifling ass women. They don't, but it's definitely normalized. This single parenthood is definitely normalized. It's not supposed to be that way. That's why you have two parents. So that we can work as a team to raise a child. You know what I'm saying? It's hard being by yourself with kids, you know? Especially women with multiple. I know a lot of men that have their kids and raise their kids, and they there's no woman around. She just dipped. I could never. I can't make sense of half this shit these people do, but I I know about it. I've seen it. Tommy, what's your input on that? Um. I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all already said the pretty much everything, but you know, it goes like case, it goes like this individual uh, thing when it comes to that. Like, it's always a reason why they split, and the kids always end up suffering. But like, I know when I left, when I got divorced, like, I would, I would be crying just for my boys, just because uh, I'm breaking their heart. Yeah, and, like, I could, I could feel them from all the way over there. You know. So shit. Uh, you know what? That makes a lot of sense, and that's what most people don't realize. Um, that even if y'all are not together, y'all still hurting the kids. I have a twelve-year-old daughter. She stopped asking me a year ago, but she will always ask me, "Hey, mom, aren't you and dad supposed to be together?" And I'm like, you know, how can I explain that to you when you already know that we are? I didn't create it, but, you know, I have two kids. Uh, they both got different dads. However, I wasn't the one to end either relationship. They were. And neither one of them see their kids or do for their kids. And there's an open line of communication here. You can call your daughter, you can call your son. Both of them choose not to, and that's not on me. However... That's where I get from, where I'm saying, I'm sitting on the other side of the fence, where I'm like, yeah, men will really sit there and create a single mother. With all intentions, you being like, okay, I'm going to have this baby. We're going to be a family. But I feel like most men can't deal with the aftermath of childbirth because a woman goes through so many changes after she gives birth to a child. Uh, postpartum, all types of things. You can't deal with it. Most men don't know how to deal with that because they're not educated on the subject. So, I, I agree. And then again, I disagree for a lot of things. I, I'm going to say that it's it's not even a man and woman thing, like I said just a few minutes ago. I think it's a people thing. I think people want something they don't know what it's like to have. And when they have it, they don't know how to appreciate it. It was it uh-huh. was it was different when they could talk about it and say they wanted it, but once it's in their face right. and it's in their possession and they have it, they don't know how to appreciate it because they don't know what it's like to receive it. That makes that makes perfect sense. It does. And and most of that's because of self. It all stems from self. They don't know how to properly love themselves. And if you can't properly love yourself, then you cannot receive love properly. And that's what people don't realize. 
So when I when I when I wrote this and I said health is wealth, it all stems from self. You have to be so mindful of yourself that what you put in and what you allow because anything outside of you is none of your business cuz you can only control you so everything else is out of your control so it must be out of your business out of your mind you can someone says that you have to um be that you have to try to be mindful of how someone perceives something and i say that's bullshit i'm calling bullshit on that cuz at the end of the day if your intent is pure and genuine and you come across Caring about yourself. You come across in a in a way that I'm going to treat you because that's how I want to be treated. Yeah. How they perceive it is none of your business because no matter what you do or say to them, they're still going to perceive it how they want to perceive it. I And here's a pure example. I went on the west side of Detroit and I say... Good morning, beautiful, to somebody. They're like, oh, all right, good morning, how are you? And, and everything was great. I go on the east side of Detroit, I say, good morning, beautiful. They said, what, 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 who are you talking to? What's your problem? I'm like, um, and it's all so about people. people. Don't know how to receive that. Like good energy, people being around you with good energy, and just people being happy on the daily. What do you have unhappy people on this earth that just walk around unhappy? And you never know who you're going to run into, honestly. But you can't do nothing but continue to be yourself. No, my whole entire life, and I'm going to put this out here because I don't like to put statements like that, that that can't be that accurate. But my whole entire life, I've always been accused of having a, a... um what is it called see i don't even know how the proper way of saying it because i don't have it an ill intent for something i always had an alternative motive of why i was nice because i was too nice and people don't like that people don't like too nice because when they see too nice then she must be trying to get up on you or she must be trying to get something from you or there's something wrong something's wrong something's fishy Every relationship just about I've been into, they always said, why are you trying to get into my head so much? Are you trying to control? Do you want to know what my moves are? What are you trying to do? And I'm like, I care about your feelings and what you're thinking. They're not used to that. They're not used to people yeah. generally caring. I have a one-year-old, and his dad will always say, every time I ask him how he's feeling or if he's okay or anything like that, he'd be like, no, I don't want to talk to you because you're just being nosy. I'm like, that's not my intentions. I'm being genuine with you. I'm trying to figure out if you're okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But some people just don't know how to receive that type of love. Facts. Facts. And honestly, but that's from how they were raised. honestly, yep, it stems back from the agreements of others. And that's what I said. Everybody should go look at that book, The Four Agreements. The agreements of others are not of you. Nobody has to take something that someone else thought about them because their love language is different than your love language and they don't know how to properly express themselves. Exactly. Okay. So they, they know no better. Instead of trying to do better, though, they keep the cycle going. And that's when the difference starts with self. And that's where health is wealth. Because you have to be mindful of yourself to become the difference. you got to want more from life to do better for yourself. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people are just comfortably numb. Say something, uh, Tommy. What do you think? It's it's sad, man, because a lot of people out here just turn their feelings off. They do. And then and then they and then they break other people because somebody fall in love with them and the whole time they're not even looking for love, but they'll act like they are. And like have you have you thinking like the whole time like the the, the they might fall in love. They mm. might. 
They might. <laughs> yeah, after a little while. No, I just don't feel like it. Tommy, you finna see. We talking about crying. I'm about to cry. Because <laughs> it's true, though. That's how that's how it is though, and in in us being so empathetic and and caring that we we try to give that hope that maybe one day they're gonna come around and maybe they will change and maybe they will love me and maybe maybe things will be better. I done it for nine years one time, and the person did not love themselves, and I loved them way more than I loved me, and I loved them way more than they loved themselves, and I couldn't do enough for both of us. Yeah, and they didn't appreciate it, huh? Um, we were best friends. They appreciated it. They just couldn't reciprocate it. Yeah. yeah. If you're not equally yoked, appreciation only goes so far. You could say thank you and I love you, but that's not going to help me if you don't reciprocate it to me. Exactly. So they received it because we were best friends. We partied like, like motherfuckers. We had a great time partying, but there's no way it was nothing healthy. It was nothing healthy at all. Mm-hmm. We had fun. We couldn't build though, because you you can't build on a broken foundation. Exactly. And, and people don't want to do that work because they're afraid. Fear holds so many people back that they are afraid of losing who they are, rebuilding themselves. They are afraid of what's to come because uh they don't they don't have a clear understanding of what's next. They're afraid of of the unknown. They're afraid of uh, newness. They're afraid of thinking they're going to lose themselves. And it's odd to me. It's odd to me. I, I just, I can't wrap my head around so many things. It's just odd to me that... So much fear is allowing people to be changed and in, in, uh, drawn to a different way. I don't know. We, we live in a generation where feelings don't matter anymore. Like I said before, everything else that's not right is glorified. You know? No feelings. Do whatever you want to do. Do you. All of that is glorified, but not properly loving somebody or, you know, being there for somebody the way they are for you. None of that is normalized. If you do something for somebody and you really sit in there and you expect them to show you the same love that you give, it may or may not happen. Mm. You can expect too much from somebody. You know, all you can do is just continue to be you. And don't let nothing change you. And that's what I really had to sit around. And I had to learn. Because when I really, really, really love somebody and I really, really mess with you, I do that like a thousand times over. However, once that's not reciprocated, I'm going to start feeling for you. Someone but said reciprocation something. is very, very important for a lot of people. But you gotta speak somebody's love language too. There was a comment from one of the um, people. I can't really see who says it. Uh, they say that's why I love this podcast. Live experience, pure love. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you. And, and that's what I want to do. I want to continue passing on positive love. And and I don't want to get into a situation ship where you have um. You have these rules and regulations and you can't do certain things because I am so free spirited. I want to love everybody. I want to give everybody their flowers and I don't want you to feel some type of way and tell me I cannot give this person their flowers because you have a problem with yours. Mm-hmm. And that's what people do when they get into a relationship. They get into a relationship and they think that all of a sudden there's a title and then there's rules. Yeah. You have to um sacrifice. You have to uh bend. You have to um what is it? Make a a a I don't even know. See, I can't even no say the words. What you have to what? Water yourself down. Water yourself down and com- and that's exactly what it is. You have to um, compromise. I I don't know those words. They're not in my um, vocabulary. 
Right, because why did you get with me? I'm who I am when you got with me. I thought this is who you like. Yeah. Now we're changing it up? Yeah. What's going on? And, and, and why can't I show everybody the same love? Because at the end of the day, nobody owns nobody. Everybody's here by choice. Everybody's on this platform by choice. Everybody tuning in by choice. Everybody has a choice. Nobody's forced to do anything in this world. Yet, people think because you are with somebody that you are, they are entitled to have to be a certain way. Which isn't true. Because if you are mindful of yourself, love is never forced. Love is never compromised. Love is never watered down. Love is never um, one-sided. Proper love isn't. Because when you give yourself proper love, you don't give yourself those. You don't half-ass yourself. So if you don't half-ass yourself, why would you half-ass another person? That's what I can't wrap my head around. Go ahead. If you have a relationship that you respect, then like, then like you gotta you respect it. You move, you do move out of respect of your of your significant other. You know what I'm saying? If you respect oh, yourself, that don't mean. Though, though, Tommy, not to cut you off, because I love you with all my heart, so not to cut you off. But if you respect yourself. What you do is mindful of yourself is going to be mindful of others because you're going to treat people the way you want to be treated. So if you properly you respect yourself, you don't have to think of that other person in a certain way. And you don't have to move accordingly in a certain way. I want real and honesty. I want someone to come to me and say, hey, th I'm feeling this person's energy tonight. Either we could do this together or I'm about to do this alone. It's up to you. And I'm down. Shit, we can probably do it together. If you're feeling their energy, I'm probably feeling their energy. But if if I'm not feeling their energy and they're not they're not going to equally water us and they're not going to give us that kind of equal vibration that we're on, then they're not of us. But hey, damn it! I mean, it is what it is. I'm I'm not mad. <laughs> and if anything, I'll hold the camera or get the snacks. Like shit, I ain't mad at you. But I'd rather you be honest with me and be truthful than try to to manipulate me. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, you're only playing yourself, fool. Yeah. And people don't get that. Go that ahead. It takes a mentally strong person, though, to think like to think like that. And that's the thing: people shouldn't get in a right. situation unless they're mentally strong. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be able to be cool with all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. You don't know that you'd be cool with two, two girls? I mean, I would be fine with two girls. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying. Like, I'm in a relationship and shit, and, and my girl want to be like, yo, I'm feeling this dude. Like, no, you're not. No. no, but see, the thing is, is if you are who you were supposed to be as a man, it wouldn't be that way. If the man gives the woman everything she needs at home, she don't go looking. Exactly, right, not right. at all. Never. She doesn't think of a whole nother dude at all because she has everything she needs at home. She will. Yeah. Now, uh, now a man, he doesn't go looking for somebody because he's lacking. That's not what a man goes looks for. He goes look because he's feeling that energy and because she's bringing something that you may not bring. Not because he's lacking. Mm -hmm. A woman will not leave her home. If she's treated like a queen. But you have to learn how to love yourself correctly first. Exactly. And you, you'll be surprised how many women are okay with a lot of things. Because <laughs> I'm telling you. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm older and and I've had um relationships with a lot of different um females with my male. And they were comfortable with a lot of different things because all a female wants to do is feel loved and wanted and appreciated and beautiful. That's it. It's so simple. 
And if another woman is giving you that for the night, and you don't have no bullshit, no extra to go with it, they're down for that, I promise you. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> So it, it's not about it's not about a strong person. It's about the fact that if you treat yourself respectfully and you are mindful of yourself and you are open, you don't have boundaries and you don't have a closed place. You don't have a wall. You say how you feel. You'll be surprised on what you hear. You should be surprised. And that's what happens. People have are afraid or afraid. They're like they're gonna like um, I don't want to tell her that you know this. I'm feeling this girl and that you know because I love my wife or my girlfriend and I don't want to let her know you know that I'm having these feelings for someone else. Men don't try to replace the woman, just like a woman don't try to replace the man. Their needs are both different. If you have a woman at home that's willing to have other women with you and telling you that you are allowed to be you and true to you, he's not going nowhere. Because he's able to be him. Just like a female. If you are able to be truthful and honest. And now if any female feels like she has to have a bunch of men, then she's just not ready to be with no one. Promise you. Because females only want one man their whole entire life to be protected and taken care of and safe. If she feels like she needs 10 guys, then she's got a problem with her. And her, she needs to go do some inner work. Let the church say amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. No, seriously. I'm just That's saying. All you really want is one man. As long as you feel like you like clean at home and being appreciated. I'm not about to go out looking for nobody. That's at tiring. Home. That's exhausting. What the fuck? You mean you gotta start all over and get to know this person all over What's again? Your favorite color? I'm giving up. I'm done. <laughs> what do you want to eat tonight? Because I don't even know what you like. I'm done. Right. <laughs> Who wants to keep on doing that repeatedly? I do, it took me a long time just to get to know you and how you sleep at night and, and whether you snore or not and what side I can push you on. Right, Bob? I'm a wild sleeper. I'm going to sleep all over the bed. I don't want to keep on doing that. Like, just give me one person that I can trust. Like, I'll be the first to admit that. Like, just give me one partner that knows that I sleep like that and we can live life together. I don't want to keep on getting it. No, me neither. <laughs> I like the fact that, that the people that I'm laying next to doesn't snore. I don't want to wake up one day and not sleeping because they're over there doing their business. So you you got to pick and choose, you know, and, and if it's meant to be, it's not forced. People got to realize that, but it all starts with self. You got to love yourself. I mean, Tommy, how many times would you like to go figure out another person all over again? I'm done figuring it out. See? See? <laughs> And that's exactly yeah, how I, I feel. <laughs> I'm done. Like that's it's very tiring and time consuming. It is. I've been hurt enough, man. Thank you. I feel you. I feel you. I can relate for real. You I feel very, yeah, especially when you think you know somebody, and it turns out they're a completely different person than they let on. You know, and then people blame you and they say, oh, you were the one that missed the red flags. We already knew. Yeah. Why y'all didn't tell me? <laughs> now, there's a couple situations. I believe in the three-month rule. you got to give somebody three months before you really start falling in love with the person because their false representative will walk away eventually. It's that honeymoon stage. Yeah. And then, also, I believe that... um. <clears throat> that you got to be friends first because at the end of the day when there's something difficult in hand you can't handle it if you ain't your friend now i don't know that because i was friends with my son's dad for about a good six months and things just turned out so well once we got into a relationship things just started going left because I bet you he was one of those persons that held on to titles. Now that you're in a relationship, yeah. this is how I'm going to treat you. Yeah. He forgot you and were his friend. Me being a person that I am, I'm 
I was like, you know, he kind of warned me in the beginning. I me, I'm ignoring all the red flags. I'm like, I'm still the person who I am. Yeah. I'm gonna get up at three o'clock in the morning if you say you're hungry. Yeah. Which I did. Yeah. But he was still who he was. You know what I'm saying? He didn't let go of people in his past. He was still holding on to past women and things like that. So it was never going to work. Me being there and thinking, hey, I could change him because I'm way different than these women. That's, that did not work. No. You can't change a person. Even if y'all are friends first, people do give you false representatives. They do. Sense. They do. I promise you. What what was the plenty, the uh, moment in your uh, marriage, Tommy, that you just knew that you lost your friend? Lost my what? Your friend. Uh, I was never uh, friends with her first. Really. Thank you. And that's what I'm talking wow. about. That's what I'm talking about. Because people tend to forget at the end of the day that person's still your friend. And they started treating them as if it became habit forming or a responsibility or or something different. I mean I, I mean uh like it's I, I'm I'm not I've never I tell a chick straight up, I'm not gonna be your friend like after this. I'm not gonna keep your contact, I don't we're not gonna keep talking. You're never gonna see me again, you know what I'm saying? Like we're not fucking friends like that. Because the only thing that's going to do is cause more drama for my next relationship. So, I get that. But I don't mean friends like that. I don't mean friends like that. I mean when you guys have a discussion and, and, and you guys have a difference of opinion that you can't sit and talk about it. Oh. Uh, I mean friends like dude, that. My age will beat the fuck out of me, dude. I bet you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, we want to fucking friends. I bet you. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. I bet you she got you with the false representative, didn't she? She pretended she was somebody she wasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. And once she got you else, in, yeah. once she got you in, she became somebody different. Mm -hmm. Because that's the, that's one of those things where you're asking for something you don't know what it's like until you receive it. And then you're like, man, I really didn't want this. So yeah. Uh, but I, 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 hey, I was, I stayed for ten years and I tried and tried and tried to forgive him, forgive him, forgive him. Ten years, Tommy. Y'all did ten years. I did eight the first time. I did nine. I did three the second time. I'm done serving like that. So right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, and I didn't create a crime. I feel you. I done nine one time. I done five and then nine, and then everything didn't last over. Uh, seven months was the longest one recently. Like, <laughs> oh my God. Man, I, I've only been, I've only been in two two serious relationships. Yeah, you, you, my whole you life, like, and that was my my ex wife, and the woman I was with after that was she's a forty five year old woman. And we were together for three years, and Don't she fucking about. played the shit out of me. Aww. Don't talk about the older people, Tommy. Listen. <laughs> the first she played time me I like a fool. Eight years, I was with a 45-year-old man, and I was 18 years old. He was physically abusive, mentally abusive. He did both. And I still stuck around for eight entire years after I had lost everything. I'm like, all I got left is you. And so I came thinking he was going to change and he never did. So would I be wrong to say... That's where she gets at when she says that you have to love yourself yeah. first. Because after I got out of that one, I really had to learn how to love me. Yeah. And be able to go and be like, you know what? This is not for me. This is not healthy for me. I'm losing who I am. So would I be wrong to tell you both that in a couple of days I'll be 49? What'd you say? In a couple days, I'll be 49. Ooh. In a couple days? Yeah. Happy early birthday. <laughs> well, Happy I, birthday. I, well, I don't celebrate that kind of stuff, but it's on New Year's Eve. So, like, oh, I'll be 49 then. So, like. That's what's up. But just, just to be honest, yeah, yeah. so don't throw them old people under the bus. <laughs> I'll be 
I don't believe in that None shit. None of that somebody, matters. Somebody out there created time. Somebody yeah. Else created birthday so that we can keep track of whatever. And not only that, to age ourselves. Listen, I do not feel no 49. I don't know where. And I, and, and like, I, I, no, I can't do it. I can't wrap my head around it. I don't even know where this year went. I don't even know where this year went. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I, I just remember January. I vaguely remember January. I, I remember March, April, May, and that's all I remember of this of this whole year. <laughs> and now we're back in in December. I don't know where everything else went. <laughs> that's because time is a is a very social construct. Like yeah. time is not real. No. If we really think about it, how do we know? that the person, first person who created calendars was even right in the first place. For real. And there weren't. Not what we knew. Yeah, there's other countries in the world. Um, you know, like, you Your volume oh, went. There go. Okay. Say what? They're feeling like, um, I'm not sure if it's 2012, 2013, or 14. But they're way back in the past, and we're in the future. We're in 2023, and they're still living in the 2013, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, i seen that. Yeah. And you want to know what else? Tommy, what time is it where you're at? 802. Yeah, it's 902 here. How how, how is time different in places? Time is so (laughs) Somebody else would be three hours different. I'm thinking, what the hell? How? Why? It's time. That's why I'll be late for work. I'll be like, listen, it's 12 o'clock somewhere. It's somewhere. I'm on time. You're lucky I'm here. That's what I would tell them. You're lucky I'm here. I got to the point where I ain't doing that shit no more. (laughs) I signed up to give you my time, but like now you're being too much with it. (laughs) I'm talking about them. Time moves so fast. It does. This year, or whatever they want to call it, went by so fast. Hi, cutie. Hi. Thank you. Are you at Say hi. Hi. <laughs> down, come look. Hi. Hi. He's got the cutest hi. boys hi. ever. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say, hon? What do they say about in the comments? We are all here now. The past few times have been talking about the comments where we make it. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I say. That's why I love tomorrow. I don't even think it's about tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. It's all about the now. People forget to live in the now. Mm-hmm. And that's all that matters. Five minutes from now ain't going to matter. Five minutes ago it's barely past. matters. It's the past. Yeah. It's all about now. Because if you can't worry about what's happening right now, you're too stuck in a whole other area that has none, nothing to do with nothing because you're not going to be the same person. I promise you. I will post something on Facebook and then three minutes later change my mind and take it down because I am not the same person I was when I first posted it. <laughs> yeah, straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that, that that shit don't matter. It's all about the now. People don't live in the now. They're too worried about yeah. yesterday or tomorrow. They tend to forget about the now. Yeah. She just accidentally ended it. Oh snap! The whole thing. Yeah. Oh okay. dang. She didn't mean to. Hold on. I'm going to put it back on. That was an accident.
sorry everybody. Um, she accidentally ended the live. I have to restart it. It's coming up. Let me go do this real quick. Oops. <laughs> People need to be mindful of themselves and learn to love themselves correctly. Listen, when you left, you accidentally hung up everything. <laughs> listen, listen. I had got a phone call. I'm like, oh my God, who's calling me right now? <laughs> it ended, ended the whole live. Um, I'm still on uh, I'm still on Sprinker though so the audio is still going on the uh, for the all the audio platforms for the podcast just the Facebook got shut off so now I gotta go share it back to my page but yeah it ended everything I'm about to play Tommy's music here in a second um <laughs> I was like she got she, she ended it accidentally <laughs> I'm so sorry that's okay part two I apologize everybody <laughs> part two what we'll have to do is uh n next time you're gonna have to put your phone on do not disturb or something <laughs> yeah I did not do that and I forgot you know, people rarely call. Yeah. Like, calling me right now. It was my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm going to play one of Tommy's songs. I still got it on here, so it don't matter. Everything's still saved. But this is my one-year-old. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. 
It's still playing. And every time I call, they keep on asking me why. And every time I tell them, you know how time flies. No, it's hot time. I make a trip to my yeah, parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like them bad bros, man. Yeah, take your bag on. So bad. And I tell them, you know, make your bag strong. Bad like them always. Make it fast on. I swear it ain't nothing that's better than bag on. Bag on. It was still playing. What'd you say? Big Soph. I don't know what she said. I don't know. <laughs> Big Soph, what did you say? It was still playing. Can you hear us? Nope. <laughs> I don't know what she was saying. I'm going to play another song, though. Time, 
same time, time losing and wasting time. I don't spend my life waiting, now I'm fake a shine. I've been on my fucking grind, can't even remember last time that I took a shot. But them boys shining, and they ain't heard for nothing since they've been alive. Baby mama know I'm gon' provide, and I'ma stay alive, I keep that fire on my side. And if they wanna play with me, I take them down the slide. I bet they ain't gon' slide, I bet they run it high. I just find it crazy high. I don't even know your name and you still pay me mine You ain't even hating now, you just a fan of mine And you can keep on watching, I'ma blow your fucking mind I put my trust inside myself cause I can't trust nobody else oh. Tell me how you gonna love me when you can't even love yourself oh. It ain't been so many times I done did the same thing Tell me how you gonna love me when you can't even love yourself Time, time. Now I'm 29, shit ain't even lie If it wasn't for my boys, I wouldn't even be alive All I've ever seen is pain and all I know is to survive I wake up every day and make it happen for my guys Wipe away these tears and just get lost off in my grind Ain't no limit to what I do to stay the fuck up out my mind Got some dick up in that hood even though she wasn't mine And it was way more of her pleasure than it was of mine and I looked her in her eyes while she realized She playing it right, she ain't no prize I fuck her real nice, be hold it like a vice Cause you ain't about to run up out of plugs I put my trust inside myself cause I can't trust nobody else oh. can't trust nobody. Tell me how you gonna love me when you can't even love yourself oh. It ain't done this so many times What I had on my mind But they can't talk about it cause they giving up that time And where's what? No. My turn. So. Chill out. Chill out. Big self, what? Would you ask? Okay, <laughs> And where can we find your music at, Tommy? Uh, everywhere. Just type Tommy Arigato. Tommy Arigato. Yeah. Um, like, uh, I have it up there. Apple Music everywhere. everywhere. I, I put it on. I put it on there in the comments on all platforms. All platforms. Everywhere. And then Tommy Ar Arigato. There you go. Hey, still on now. Ah, you did the same thing I did. <laughs> I did. That's all right. Go on, go on with that, boy. <laughs> Big, y'all go in there. No, you ain't. You terrorizing and bring. <laughs> it sounds like you're being a brother. I'm surprised they were quiet. As long as they were. Okay. Hmm? How many do you have? Two boys. Woo! I got one boy and one girl. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I only had one boy, and I swear I had thirty. Like he that been boy, them boys do something different, don't they? He he been to jail <laughs> more yeah. times than I ever thought about. Like I've never been to jail, so like his he's been more jail than age, and like. I had experienced so much stuff. I swear, I felt like I had thirty kids. I was just like that one did it in. I'm glad though. I got two grandsons though. Uh, they're beautiful. They're blessings. But anyway, so we're gonna wrap this up though. Um, Tommy, I'm gonna share your music constantly. Um, on Twisted Radio. Uh. I appreciate you. Eventually, once you get pop and come back on on Twisted Radio, and um, 
show some love because we're gonna show you love all the way around. Yep. Yeah. But um, may everybody's night be full of positive energy and high vibrations. Health as well. Feed into yourself so you can feed into others. Ashe, everyone. <laughs>